But first, we catch up with an international con man who is posing as a United Nations peacekeeper. This is a picture of you posing as a UN officer. Can you explain this to us, please? Did you tell your Arab clients that you're a convicted con man? I'm on my way to Belgium to confront a con man. He's a serial fraudster, he's now in his 60s, but he just seemed incapable of going straight. The man we're after passes himself off as the Anglo-French aristocrat Guy Lever de Montfort. But three years ago, Inside Out showed he was really just a con man. We caught him at work, pretending to raise cash for the victims of 9-11. We are the only 9-11 project yeah. that is featured on the White House's official website. Not one of the American 9-11 projects, our project is on it. He claimed his project had some extremely impressive backers. Who did you get? The Pope, President Bush, President Clinton, Tony Blair, right? Margaret Thatcher, uh, Norman Tebbit, Chairman of the US Joint Chiefs, US Secretary General. Needless to say, such backers had not endorsed the project, and none of his nominated 9 11 charities received any money at all. We discovered he was really just plain Graham Lever, a convicted fraudster who targets rich investors and wealthy women. He escaped from prison in Britain and married Jean Donofsky in the USA before she found out who he really was. He also proposed to Candace Tetmeyer and helped himself to her savings before being deported to complete his three-year sentence for check fraud. But Graham Lever hasn't given up. He simply moved across the channel to Belgium, where he's less well known. We've tracked our man down here to the historic city of Bruges. Once again, he's looking for wealthy investors. This time, however, He's posing as Brigadier Major G.G. Lever de Montfort, a veteran of the United Nations Peacekeeping Corps. In his blue beret, Graham Lever sought out potential investors and staff. He was wearing the uniform when he recruited Nancy Van Bram as his marketing manager. The first time I saw him, he came in his uniform, just returning from a meeting. And later on, during our conversation, he told me that it was a uniform from the United Nations and also a beret, a blue beret. We went to Brussels to find out about his military record. I had colleagues in New York check with the military advisor's office in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations and there's no record of him in databases and there's uh, nobody remembers that kind of name and with that kind of rank in the UN, no, he would have been known. But his UN disguise was good enough to fool unsuspecting civilians. Nancy was initially impressed by his military background and arranged meetings for him with wealthy investors in Dubai. She also saw Graham Lever using UN accreditation at the airport. He has two passports, one from the UK and another one was a passport from the United Nations or the United Nations Association. So. Ah, so a passport that lets him through the diplomatic channel, perhaps? Well, when we were at the airport, he showed that passport to the information desk and he wants to get a kind of priority label on this luggage. So I need priority, of course, this is very important stuff. The UN only has one passport that you can travel on. We have other kinds of ID, but only one you can travel on. It's this blue passport called a laissez-passer. It's usually valid for about five years. I again took the liberty of checking with our visa and passport office in New York and they keep pretty good track of these things because they can be mis misused and there is no record. They even checked the databases in Geneva and Vienna, the two, two other places where you can issue UN passports. No record. This is Graham Lever's latest project, Equitasia in the Desert, a $600 million equine theme park to be built in the United Arab Emirates supervised by a trustworthy veteran from the United Nations. His new company, Merlin's Eye, is based here in Bruges. He's still claiming support from some familiar names. Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, Margaret Thatcher, and he's also leaving a familiar trail of debts. 
Graham Lever is being chased by an architect in Dubai who says he's owed nearly $50,000. While in Dubai, he also met another potential investor. Vin Hilsden runs Transcom, a multinational IT software company. He commutes between Dubai and his home here in Monaco. Graham Lever tried to persuade him to invest £200,000 in Ecotasia in the desert. Graham presented himself as a United Nations officer that was there to provide uh, uh, information and, and advice to the Dubai government, namely His Highness the Sheikh Mohammed. And uh, he presented himself in a very bold and courageous way, uh, gusty, if you like. He projected himself as the real thing, and of course, uh, I just assumed that he was uh, Guy Lever de Montfort, who was working for the United Nations. It does concern us, of course, especially if he's uh, believed to be from the UN and if he's involved in things that the UN would not be very proud of. Of course it concerns us. And also, uh, a General Assembly resolution, way back from 1946, uh, expressly prohibits the, the use of the UN's name and logo without the Secretary General's approval. So, in a way, it's also illegal. Doesn't give anyone comfort. Vin eventually decided not to invest. Despite this, Graham Lever has continued to claim that Transcom is backing the project. The mere fact that he actually used the name of Transcom in publications uh, in an effort to attract money uh, from, from investors is something that I find unacceptable. Nancy soon realized that Graham Lever was lying to everybody around him. She resigned after just six weeks. But by that time, he'd already fallen in love with her and proposed marriage. He gave me this ring uh, when we were eating in, in the Hilton Hotel. Well, he and... just popped it out of his pocket yeah, and said, yeah, ring. do you want to marry yeah. me? I said, I have a ring for you, so if you can wear it. And he gave it to me when I was running in a, into the hotel to see some people there with him. And that was it. <laughs> It was very romantic. <laughs> I think it's very important to give it back. It, it doesn't belong to me. Nancy wants to give the ring back, so she's arranged to meet Graham Lever in the Belgium coastal town of Kanoka. And we thought it would be a good moment to ask the man with all the answers a few questions. Uh, Graham Lever, I'm Martin Gregory from BBC Inside yeah, Out. Hi, Martin. How are you? This is a picture of you posing as a UN officer. Can you explain why you pose as a UN officer? I'm not explaining anything, my friend. All I can tell you is what we, we were doing in Abu Dhabi was, and in Dubai it was genuine. It's a hell of a project. I'm handing it over to my colleagues and I'm not going to be part of it. Did you tell your Arab clients that you're a convicted con man? And we're just trying to ask you questions about yourself as a UN officer, about your past as a con man, and whether or not your Arab clients have been told the truth about who you really are. And who am I really meant to be? Do tell me. You're a 64-year-old convicted con man. I'm not, I, was not, I was not convicted of, of, of any con... I have of a, check uh, fraud? I, I have one conviction back in 1987. We Here want to ask you about Merlin's Eye and the project you're now running in United Arab Emirates, attempting to con Arab... No, we're not... Arab me. investors. No. Out of them. Do you I'm tell sorry. them that you're a convicted con man If or you not? are going to make this kind of statement, I'm not talking to you. We're not conning anybody. We put all our own money in. The whole thing is there. Everybody who's been involved has been paid right, and on time. Well, we know that that's not true. It is true. We have spoken to people who have not been paid. We have spoken so, to people who are in dispute with you. I have nothing but, more to say to you, OK? Because it is not so. Mr Lever refused to explain why he's pretending to be a UN officer. At some point or other, all these, what they call, chickens come home to roost. And, uh, and of course, they will for him. Creditors in Dubai are pursuing Graham Lever, and they now know the real background of the bogus brigadier. Love you lot, don't you?